Hi everyone, Sonia here, and you're watching Pouring with Sonia. And I did a four ring tree ring pour a couple days ago with some <coughs> interesting colors, some gold and um, blue and pink, silver, and it did dry copper. It dried up so nice. It's got this beautiful metallic shimmer to it. I love it when um, metallics and things dry because they just look so different than they do when they're wet. So this dried really nice. Um, and what I wanted to try now was just kind of all metal type um, colors with a black. That one had a white um, background. So I have some Deco Art metallic paints. I've got... Uh, rich espresso, which is right here. Um, Deco Art Emperor's Gold, which is here. Um, then I've got some Sergeant Arts um, Antique Gold mixed with, I didn't quite have enough, some Artist Loft Metallic Bronze. They're very similar. And that is right here. So this is much thicker. I, I don't typically really enjoy using the deco art metallics or color shifts because they're so thin and I don't and I like thicker paints so um, I have a hard time getting them thick enough so we'll see I think this is a little thin for what I usually like to do but let's just give it a go I have the deco art um, metallics zinc then I have I have some Sergeant Arts Aztec Gold, and I only have like a half an ounce of that. Um, so I added to that the Deco Art Rose Gold. I mixed them together, so I have kind of a half and half Rose Gold and half um, in Aztec Gold. And then finally, I have Deco Art Copper, which is oh, which is this one. This is the rose gold mixed with the, I'm sorry, you can tell the difference. But they're all kind of similar. Um, and so when I've got some black mixed up. So this is my ring pour um, mixture, which is three parts Floetrol and two parts glue and one part pouring medium. My pouring medium that I used in with this is the Sargent Arts uh, Gloss Varnish. And then what I do for the ring pour is one part of this pouring medium to one part of the paint. Which normally gives me a nice thick paint, but these Deco Arts are so thin that they're a little thinner than I like. I like them to really, really give a mound because then I get those really, I mean, I like ring pours with these kind of defined lines really defined um, and you can move them around and they're gonna not get all quirky and so that's what my mixture does one to one but I, I think we might be in for a little bit of trouble here but let's just see now when you do a ring pour you have to think about the color you put on the bottom is going to be the center of your ring pour that comes out last and I want that to be my zinc so I want that, and then I want some interesting colors mixed to it. So I'll do like a light, then maybe the bronze. So I've got zinc gold, bronze, chocolate, hmm, that dark espresso, I mean, maybe. These two are way too similar, so I want to split them up. So I'll do that half rose gold, half... Um, Aztec gold and then the chocolate and then the copper and I could mix these up um, you know not keep them in that order but that's going to be my starting order and so what I'm going to do is I've got 12 ounces of paint here for my 10 by 20 canvas and I want to get at least two layers but I'm going to have four cups two ounces each that's 12 ounces of paint I need about 12 and a half, but I'm going to put a flood coat of the black down. So let's just get started layering our cups. And I'm really going to, oh yeah, that's right. I'm doing four of them. Duh. Oh no, wait. I don't think I want 
quite that much because I want to go back in with another layer of that zinc. Good grief. I was like, dun, dun, dun. I just got to split it into four. But I really don't. I'm going to split it into four twice. <laughs> just kind of went crazy with that. I'm going to pour a little bit more of that back. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. And then I really want to try and keep them a little bit separate. They're so thin that I'm a little, I don't want them to drop down on top of one another. So I'm really going to be careful and put them in from the side. You probably already know this trick. But I'm going to assume that everybody watching doesn't know. So I will just try and explain everything. All right, these are five ounce cups, so I should have like up to here maybe when I'm done. Five ounce cups that I'm pouring into. Okay, now we've got that kind of rose gold mixed with the Aztec. I don't know, I mean, this may not be enough interesting colors. Um, there may all be too similar, but I thought, I thought about it. And you know, when you think about it and you're dreaming about it, you might as well just do it. Or you're going to keep dreaming about it and thinking about it <laughs> and wondering about it. So I just thought I would stop that cycle and just do the pour. Just do the pour. <laughs> all right. And some copper here to end it off. I do like copper next to black, so I think I will follow up with that zinc right after this. At least a little bit. Nothing exciting about watching someone layer their cups, but... And I did a pour earlier today. I had three really bad pours. I was totally experimenting and um, trying a new, completely new technique, and it required a lot of thought about the composition, which normally you don't have to do that that much with paint pouring. And um, and they were just on some cheap little um, square wood pieces and they bowed and cracked and all kinds of stuff so I'm like bummer but I had some leftover paint so I mean I'd had three bad pours right I was like well I'm not gonna even record it and it is awesome <laughs> I wish I had recorded it because I didn't experiment I did you know my tried and true swipe and it turned out fantastic and um I wish I had recorded it now I should have known I told myself I'm going to record everything from now on. And I was like, oh, I've just, I've used all of these colors. They didn't turn out well. So this, what's the point of even recording? It, it wasn't the colors that were bad. It was me trying some new technique that was bad. So I guess I am just going to repeat the exact same order. I wasn't sure if I was going to mix it up, but I've been too busy talking to you. So, oh. I guess I'm just gonna do the same order. <laughs> and hopefully that makes an interesting rain pour. There's, the, there's enough differentiation in the colors that it looks good instead of too blendy. I don't really want the ring pours to be blendy. You want those rings to be well defined. Well, I do. That's the point of a ring pour to me for me. Art is so subjective, it can be whatever you want it to be. Okay, we'll do this one now. See, they're so thin. Not at all what I normally like <laughs> for ring pours. But I have all these deco arts, so I might as well metallics and color shifts. So this uses up a lot of the metallics, and that's good. I mean, I bought them. Played with them, I just probably wouldn't buy them again. I would buy something like the Artist Loft Metallics and stuff. I'll try a whole different brand. Okay, get 
getting the good down to the last drop of all my colors out of here because I should have um, 12 and a half ounces and I only have 12. So I just want to make sure I scrape out all that paint. Oh, so thin. <laughs> I'm already almost dreading how this is going to not hold its rings. But we'll see that together. And then maybe I'll post them in a row, even though I didn't do them right in a row. Maybe I'll just post the videos right in a row so that we can compare a thicker paint versus a thinner paint. And then you may like one better than the other. I love copper. I know I'm going to lose a lot of this copper. So if I had been not gabbing with you and I had been paying attention, I would have mixed up my layering the second time around and not made the copper the last color. Because whatever color you pour down first is probably going to get rolled over or tilted off. All right. I mean, not always, but a lot of the times. Doesn't really matter. So in my cup here, or in my little squirt bottle, it's just um, Artists, Artist Loft Flow Black. And it's mixed two to one with um, Floetrol to paint. And I want to get a nice flood coat on that metallic one I just showed you. I kind of skimped on the flood coat and it made it a little bit hard. Harder than it needed to be to tilt. So we're just gonna do that. <laughs> Load it up and hopefully, and if that's not enough, if I don't feel that's enough, then I will go back and get some more. And basically what I want is just a thick enough coat I mean, a wet canvas we've all heard of, but I want a little bit more, a little bit extra, so that it can just really f float on top of it, N enough for this to kind of move too. I don't want it to be super thick, because <clears throat> I'm gonna have a lot of paint that I pour out, but I do want it to be, I really skimped on it last time. I don't think I skimped this time, so that's good. I'm not even gonna worry about the sides because um, chances are they'll get tilted over and if they don't, I'll use my finger to you know, fix up the sides anyways. All right, so there we have a nice little flood coat. Let me just put this over here. All right, are we ready to get this party started? Yes, we are. Okay, so maybe one, two, three, four. I think that's what I did last time too. And I don't know if that really works that well because some tilt off, and, but I think that, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I don't know, there's not very much of that zinc. I don't think there's enough dark in there. I should have put some actual black in between my layers. <clears throat> so we'll see. Let's start this a little bit close so that they kind of run into one another. I was hoping that zinc, it looked like it was a nice, really dark silver. And I guess it is. It's just not, it's not black. <laughs> so, all right. Again, I don't want to be too far off. I'll tell you, this nice thin one's easy to pour. Sometimes I really struggle pouring my really thick paint out in nice little circles because it's so thick it wants to just be a little globby. 
This is certainly easier to pour. We'll see how it tilts. I'm gonna have to go in and fix that center of that one. I did pretty good. I don't know. I'm gonna have to fix them all. <laughs> I always do. I have to fix them all. The centers. I'm not very good at getting those centers very um, perfect. Some people are like, oh, it's just this perfect 3D looking spiral. I have to go in with a barbecue skewer and fix it. Okay, so there are my four rings. I'm gonna get my little skewer here. Got my skewer. Oh, I don't have my little light up glasses. <laughs> yep, I have those little light up reader glasses that I will often use. Oh my gosh, it's so thin. I'm already a little worried about this. And that one looks pretty good, but I'm just going to... Okay. All right. Let's see what happens. I'll keep them there just in case I want to come back. Get a little bit of paint out. So, let's see, you guys. Uh, hmm. Let's come over here first. And last time I had kind of a hard time getting this area covered, so live and learn. I want to get it now. And let's come over here. Okay, I'm going to set this down, turn it around, because I like Oops. <laughs> I like tilting away from me for whatever reason. Just feels better to me, I guess. Okay. I'm just fixing these sides because I see them, these little corners. And then whatever I'm putting on here, if I notice it, I can just fix it now because then as I'm tilting, it'll kind of get some of the pattern on there. So now let's come down here. Come on, you're squishing my guy. Okay, oh, get all the way over the corner. Good, and let's come back here. The grand finale, let's see if we can <laughs> race to the corner without losing too much of the middle of this other one. It looks like I'm gonna lose most of the middle of that other one. but it'll make an interesting side. And so let me just tilt this back a little bit. I know you can't see that, but tilt it back a little bit. So I have, let me just step back and look at it for a minute. The rings actually, I was really worried they were not gonna stay defined and they're actually pretty defined. Those are pretty nice looking rings. Um, I wish I had a dark, like an actual black in there. Um, so I'd have a really nice contrast. The silver, the zinc is different than any other color in there. So it, that in and of itself is a contrast. And I know the colors are going to dry darker um, than they are when they're wet. So maybe it'll be a little bit darker. But black would have just been nice. Who are we kidding? Um, let me think if I want to change or tilt or anything. I'm just wondering if I want to try and fix that, but I doubt if I can fix that. And if I do try and straighten that out a little, then I'm going to lose this eye, and I think I'd rather keep the eye of that. So I think I might just leave it at that. It's not bad. Um, if I were going to do this again, I mean, I guess I gave Deco Art Metallics a bad wrap because they worked out pretty well. I do still like the thicker ones, but boy, was that easy to pour and um, tilt. That was really easy to pour and tilt nice and thin like that. 
and it still kept it shape pretty well. I don't know, that looks kind of fun like um, wood. I was thinking of more galaxy type. Not really galaxy because it's all kind of penny and earth metallic type colors. So I don't know what I was expecting, but I kind of dig it. Um, I think I'm blocking all the lights. So what I'm going to do real quick is wipe my hands off, take off my gloves, and then we'll come in for a close-up so you can really see some of these pretty rings. I'm trying to be really careful how I take my gloves off so I can reuse them or wash them or something. Keep on using them. I used to be very flippant about the gloves. Um, and with our current crisis, I'm trying to be very much more conscientious of all paper products and waste materials and all kinds of stuff. Oh my gosh, I can't even get these gloves off. Okay. <laughs> Is really struggling. The struggle is real when you're trying not to just rip them off and turn them inside out. I, I couldn't get it off. Now I'm trying to get this next glove off. I'm sorry, you guys. How boring. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. And now, of course, I'm trying to get the glove off and I just got paint all over my hands because I'm touching the wet part of the glove that I was that I wiped off. Oh my goodness, I'm just a wreck. So now I need to go get a paper product it was trying not to have to use <laughs> to wipe the paint off my hands so I can grab my camera. <laughs> All right. So let's just come on in here for a close up. Oops. There we go. All right. So, um, the thinner consistency. Oh, I forgot to torch again. Talk on it. I'm terrible. <laughs> the thinner consistency um, still kept the definition of the rings quite well. I've got lots of different um, rings pretty well defined even after stretching. Um, just so you know, I said I forgot to torch. So normally when you pour those rings out before you tilt, you should just run a torch over them real quick to pop any air bubbles. Um, and that way you get less, I mean, I don't know if you get less. It's just, you know, kind of what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Pop those air bubbles before you're stretching and stuff. So I got some pretty cool centers here. Even though this one came off the edge, it looks kind of cool. Um, and then this one here. I'm in the way. The light's behind me. Sorry, everyone. So, and... I know that the um, metallics don't look very exciting until they dry. And then once they dry, they get all shimmery. So I expect that that silver is going to look pretty nice. The copper, the gold, it's all going to look pretty good when it dries. Um, I also think I could have, so put a little bit of black in it. But you know how I said I wanted to pour the circles really close to one another so they touched? I don't think I would have minded with this um, pouring, spacing them out a little more so that maybe a little more of that black would show. I think that would have been interesting and fun to see a little more of the black as a negative space. Um, I don't always, I don't know. You never know. But I like to look at things after I've finished and think, what would I do different if I had to do it again? I got a lot of gold in this one, and that's really the only one. I, I got a little bit here, but I don't have a lot of gold in this one and this one. I've got a lot of um, copper and zinc. The window's reflecting. I'm so sorry. I don't... The window's reflecting. The light's reflecting. It's just not very good quality. But So there it is. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Now I can get it out of my system. I don't have to dream about it at night and think, oh, I should do this color combination. <laughs> I know you know what I am talking about, <laughs> okay? We obsess over these things at least once in a while. Not all the time, but once in a while. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I gave you a couple of tips and tricks. Sorry about that window reflection. I can just see my, my white window pane right down there in the painting. I'm sorry about that, but my other painting table. Oh, I told you the other painting that I did that I didn't even record. This is it. 
<laughs> it's over here drying and um of course i didn't record it but i think it turned out pretty cool i think it looks like a um kind of a spine with ribs coming off of it very kind of organic alien organic looking i like it so um that's the one where i was just like oh, i'm just gonna use up the rest of my paints and uh, none of these colors have worked for me today, so I'm not even going to record it, and I should have known better. So that's on that table, so I had to come over here and record on this shiny table. I'm sorry, guys. Hope you'll forgive me. And that you will still like this video if you learn something from it. I always try and give out my little tips, or at least my inner thoughts. And um, subscribe to my channel, because we'll just kind of learn together as we go. That's what I did. And until we talk again, have fun pouring. Bye.